Hello and uh, welcome back to Climate Unboxed. Today we're going to be talking about masking, but not these kinds of masks. We're going to be talking about, of course, masking net CDF data. So let's get to it, shall we? So what exactly do we mean by masking? Well, let's have a look at this example. On the top left above my head over here, I've got one example field, which I've labeled field one, and on the other side, field two. So we could ask ourselves a question. And the question is, when does each point in field one exceed that of field two? In other words, when does this field exceed this one? Each of these fields might just be a snapshot in time, or they might have multiple time steps. And so what we want to do is for each individual slice in time, we want to compare the value in a particular grid point in the left field to that in the right field. Now, in order to do this, we're going to introduce new logical operators in CDO. And I've listed them here. And each of them has a very simple abbreviation. So greater is abbreviated by G, less by L, equals by E, and than by T. GE is an operator for the greater than and equals, GT greater than, LE less than and equals, and so on. Now at the bottom I've listed equals, but we should be very careful. I give a warning underneath. We should only use the equals function when comparing integer fields, not floats. And that's because equals is a very dangerous logical operator for floating point numbers where we can have rounding errors and the output. So our simple first command would be CDO space GT for greater than. And now in this particular instance, of course, we're comparing two input NetCDF files. So now rather than just having most of our commands we've seen before only have one input file, we now have two input files, field one and field two. And then we need an output. And I'm going to call this mask. So we have mask.nc. So what will mask look like? I give an example here, just to my left. So what we're going to get is a field output that has the same resolution, so the same number of latitude points and the same number of longitude points. But that field is going to be filled with just ones and zeros. So when the first field is greater than the second field here, the output file mask will have a one. If that's not true, so in other words, it's false, then we simply have a zero. Now, what about an example where we have a single field? And now we want to ask the question, where does this field exceed a threshold? So we might want to ask, when does this field exceed this number? For example, when does the temperature exceed 25 degrees C? Or we might want to say, when does the precipitation exceed a certain threshold? We might want to do this in order to calculate number of days when we had intense rainfall. We might have a crop that has a sensitive temperature threshold in the flowering season. Or for example, when we go below a threshold, we might want to calculate the number of freezing days in a month. Now we have to add an extra variable to our logical function lists. So before we've already seen these top four functions and now we're going to add another abbreviation C for constant. So what we do is we will combine these. So now we have GEC, so GE if you remember was greater than and equal to and now we have GEC which means greater than or equal to a constant. And so all of these logical operators can be combined with an extra C. So in this case, we want to compare this field to a threshold of 25 degrees. So the command starts CDO space GEC, but now we need to give it an argument. So after the GEC, we put comma and then the argument. So in this case, it's 25. That's of course, assuming that our input file has units of degree C. Of course, if it's in Kelvin, we need to give a Kelvin argument here and then we have space and then we have the input file name and then the output file name so again for every time and location we get an output file which says one if the condition is true and zero if the condition is false so again we end up with a file with a function of longitude and latitude 
And once again, if we have multiple time steps, then we will end up with multiple time slices. So now we've actually calculated the mask, we can start to do some interesting things where we can say, well, how many days in 2020 did each particular grid point exceed a temperature of 25 degrees? And so we can do that with these masks by simply summing up each of the mask slices. So for example, we could say CDO year sum. So if we had daily time step input data by doing year sum, we would end up with a field with the all of the ones added up and each location would have the number of days in which that threshold was exceeded. So we can do CDO day sum, month sum, year sum, or if we want to add up over all time steps in the input file, we might have an input file with 50 years of data. We can add up all of these masks over the whole 50 years using time sum. So let's see this in action, shall we? In this directory, I have one file. It's called hourly t2m.nc. And it is a file which if we open with nc view, it's the temperature. I like using temperature for my examples and it's running from the 1st of January. If I actually step back one step, we'll see that the last step is the 30th of June at 2300. So it actually has an hourly resolution. If I click on the animation, we can see the pulsing of the diurnal cycle each day. And it's an area that's basically has the continent of Africa in its center. So let's quit this. And let's try our first masking. Uh, so in the video, we had an example where we looked at which steps were larger than 25 degrees. So we'll do CDO space GEC. Now the units of this fire are actually in Kelvin. So in this case, I'm going to use 298 for 298 Kelvin space. Then we have the input file. I only have one file in the local directory, so I can just hit tab for completion. And then I'm going to call the output mask. Now what's going to happen when we hit enter is again, we're going to get the error due to the packing of the data. So once again, we actually need to convert the file to floats by using minus B and then F32 to convert and unpack the data from shorts uh, we can see here type equals nc short, which is a packed data, and unpack it to full floats. So we've unpacked the data and we've converted it to a mask successfully now. So if I do ls minus ltr, we have a new file called mask. Let's have a look at that and see what's inside. So if I have a look at mask using nc view, now the file looks rather strange. Now we have blue colors and we have red colors. Now, if we look at the scale on the left-hand side for NC view, we can see that the, the range of the data runs from zero to one. And in fact, the map shows us that all of the values are either zero or one. If I move my cursor in the window here, the, the number is actually displayed from the X and Y point where the cursor is pointing. And as I move it around, you can see that it's either zero or in the red region, it's exactly one. So we have either zero or one. So that's telling us wherever this number is one, we have a temperature at that hour, which exceeds 298 Kelvin. And I can animate this mask as well. And every day over the continent of Africa, as the temperature warms up, those hourly steps are exceeding 25 degrees. Now that mask can be added up for example, over each of the calendar months. So we could do CDO and we can say MUN sum, because now we're adding up the mask values for each of the hours and we called it a mask. And now I'm gonna say MUN sum hour for hourly resolution. So we add this up takes a little while because there's a number of steps. Four seconds, it's done. And now when we look at this output file, NC view, we now 
when we click on the data, remember the metadata hasn't changed, it's still called T2M. We click on this, and now we have a variable which has a, a range that runs from zero to over 700, which means when we have these red colors with 700, that's changed to a, a different color scale. These red colors essentially mean we have 744 hourly steps with the temperature exceeding 25 degrees. Over the Sahara, the number seems surprisingly low, but remember this is in January, the first time step. We had six months of data, so the first time step was for January. If we look at the date, it says 16th of January. As I step forward with the forward button, the next step will be the data for February. So now it has a date of 15th of February. Remember the time is in the middle of the month by default, but you can specify the timestamp to be at the beginning or at the end of the month using a command line option with CDO. As you saw in a previous video with the link in the pop-out banner above my head right now. As we move forward in time, March, now in April, the Sahel really starts to heat up until May and June, where the Sahara now is getting very hot indeed. So if you want to, of course, we can do this at a daily resolution. We can ask how many days have an average temperature over, for example, 25 degrees. So we do CDO day mean, and then the input file was hourly t2m.nc, and then the output we're going to call day mean.nc. And now we have the day mean, and we can actually apply the mask to the daily averages. Now we say CDO, greater than or equal constant, 298, day mean, and then we are going to say mast.nc, and I forgot again to convert this to a float, and then we can do CDO munsum mask, and then munsum. And now if we open up the munsum file and I press T2M, now we have something that looks quite similar before, but rather than being the number of hourly steps, it's the number of daily averages that exceed this threshold. And if we animate forwards and I slow things down a little bit, we have six steps in the file because the file, original file ran from January until June. You can apply this to a much longer series of data that runs for many years, and you can do annual means. You can look at how the annual means change over time. So we hope you've enjoyed the way we've covered the topic of masking, which is a mask have skill to acquire. Sorry for the joke. And we look forward to seeing you on Climate Unbox again very soon. Thank you. Hello and uh, welcome back to Climate Unboxed. So today we're going to be talking about uh, masking, but not these kinds of masks. Uh, we're going to be talking about masking. Let's see.